Havana Club have done something a little bit special for the UK market. I'm really sorry this is not going to be available around the world, but today I'm comparing one of my forever stocks. The, I'm always going to call it the Cuban Barrel Proof, but Selection de Maestros, with the brand new exclusive Havana 11 year old done especially for the whiskey exchange. Now let's just go straight in with the price comparison and kind of, you know, just the, the difference between these two. This is, you know, this is shouldn't really feature on my channel, but that's why I have a loose ceiling because I always say uh, rums up to 50 pounds, which is now 64 dollars and 58 euros. But, you know, I do break that from time to time. This is a superb rum. I absolutely adore it. And this is 57 pounds in the UK, which translates over to 74 dollars and 67 euros. OK, so 57 pounds, 74 dollars, 67 uh, euros. Now, along with the Whiskey Exchange, along with Dawn Davis uh, and all that in the UK, uh, Havana Club have released something. They, I think I saw something like World First or, or something like that. Uh, and I kind of will explain. But they have released an 11-year-old bottling at a higher ABV. This is 45% ABV. This, boys and girls, is now 50% ABV. 50 all right. Now, the price of this is a little bit more expensive. £75, which is $96.87. euros. So the price between them, we're talking £18. Let me do the maths on that. $22.20. euros. Is it worth the upgrade? So let's just clear a couple of things up here. And I kind of want to point out something else as well that I've picked up. I've not actually seen anyone else talk about this reviews. I dare say there's some out there. Some of the big reviewers have probably done this because this did get debuted at the rum show, which was now at the time of shooting four weeks ago. Uh, so I've had that bottle this long and I haven't opened it, but I did the reason I bought it is because I tried it at the rum show. Now, the whole spiel behind this is that um, Havana have done something that is nev they've never done before. And that's a special bottling for an independent retailer, as in the Whiskey Exchange. Now, from that, from my mind, I think they might have done stuff. I don't know who, but I'm just for pure kind of example, they might have done special bottlings with, for example, Bristol Spirits Company or SBS. I'm not saying they have, I'm just using those for an example because I can't think of who they have done special releases for, okay? So it's a special bottle. They've never worked with a retailer before. So that's what that is. Now, what this is, is a blend of single column and lighter multi-column column rums. It's exclusive edition it was aged entirely in American white oak casks. And in order to pre preserve the character of this rum, it's been bottled without any additives or chill filtration. Okay, so it's just been cast, aged, disgorged, bottled. All right, that's it. That's all they've done this. Now, the deep golden color is totally natural, okay, which they don't say about that. So I'm assuming now we've got a little bit of color added to that to give it that because they make a point of saying that about this one. Uh, so it's totally natural, developed over at least 11 years maturation uh, under the Caribbean sun. Now, what you have here, and this is the marketing speak, is a clear expression of a Cuban sugarcane with Cuban climate and the craftsmanship, craftsmanship of the Maestro's uh, Roniero. Salut. Now, there's also something else here that I haven't written down that I have seen on the marketing speak. And they said this has been bottled at cask strength. Now, is 50% ABV cask strength? I don't know. I can't comment one way or the other on that. It might very well be. And I don't actually know for 100% that is actually a marketing speak that they have said in this. I, it's not on the back of the bottle that is bottled at craft uh, uh, cast strength. It's just somewhere, I've seen it somewhere where it said um, cast strength. Now, to my mind, cast strength would be more than this. It would be the higher mid to high 50s at the very, very least. So I don't know whether that has been diluted or whether it's just the angel share, whether they bottled it at that precise moment that it dropped to 50% ABV due to the angel share. I don't know. I don't know the nuts and bolts about that. But 50% ABV obviously means they have got a special permission from the Cuban government to do that because by law, you know, they had to get special permission to do the 45 because I think by law it's 42 or 
43% ABV is the maximum. Now, I've just uh, opened the bottle. I'm just going to leave it there to breathe, but I'm just going to focus on this selection de maestros for a second. But already after a quick whiff, the selection de maestros is a lot more punchier in rumminess, uh, a lot more barrel agent influence, a lot more like toffee, darker wood kind of vibes going off there steady. I'd say there's big notes of toffee in there, but that does open out into fruit as well. Peaches, apricots, that kind of vibe again. And actually, now that it's been in the glass for a couple of minutes, actually quite a healthy dollop of citrus. Um, orangey lemon, more orange than anything, but I think there's a little, little touch of lemon on the back of that. Now, the big difference, obviously, to kind of point this out, um, before we go any further, is that this is entirely 11 year old rum. Whereas this, you know, I forget the age kind of DNA of this, but this is a blend. There will be some younger rums in there as well as some older rums in there. I can't remember what the maximum age in this, but there is there is a, definitely a healthy dose of higher aged rums in there, but they've also got younger rums in there. But this is just purely 11 year old rum. And something else I want to point out as well, the color difference as well, you know, the color of that is just light, golden, ambery, brown. That is quite rich, quite deep, very dark brown. So to put the emphasis that there's no coloring and no chill filtration in that kind of does make us believe that there actually is quite a healthy dose of coloring being added to this. But on the taste, again, coming from someone that really doesn't like or appreciate that much heavily aged rums. This is soft, this is drinkable, this is fruity, this is juicy. There's a little, it's the wood roastedness up front, but it just opens out into delicious fruit notes, soft fruits, peaches, apricots, tropical notes. I wouldn't say too much dried fruit, as in like Christmas cake mix, sultanas and that. There's a little bit there, but not too much. I get a little bit of cinnamon on there. That's that sort of barrel aged spice, but it's that cinnamon that kind of breaks that down for me. Definitely a lot more body in it. Now let's go back to the previous video. It should have dropped like this, the Bacardi, the eight versus the 10. This has got so much more body on it than both of the Bacardis. You know, if I was gonna compare the Bacardi 10 to the Fana Selection de Maestros, there is absolutely no comparison. That is the rum all day long. It's just more body, more oomph, the higher ABV comes out to play. It's more juicy notes. Yes, it is a little bit more expensive, but not that much more in the grand scheme of things. So that would, for me, would be the rum to pick over that Bacardi 10. But that is just delicious. And again, I, I think I can probably say that is tasting it alongside rums that I've done recently and all that. At that price bracket, yes, it is approaching the £60 in the UK. But at that price bracket, I can see I can taste the step up in quality in that. And that is a delicious, delicious rum. Now that it's had a bit of time in the glass, there is definitely that 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 aroma has now come out to play on it. It was quite soft coming out of the bottle. But now that it's a bit of air has got to it, now that it's had time to breathe, it's like woody, leathery, fruity, a different kind of fruit. I'm controversially going to go sort of green, like apples, Con very controversially off there. But I'm, I'm getting a touch of like green, what are the green apples? Um, Granny Smith apples. I'm getting a sort of nod to that on the aroma. The, the more I kind of swirl it, the more, not, not heavily, but the more every minute that passes, it changes and it's actually going, it's actually going more apricot vibes now. It's going more definitely barrel barrel influence on there. And I think that's sort of that citrusy note is is there now. Is again, it's kind of like an orangey citrusy note. That'll be interesting to kind of come back to in a few days time now that that's I've opened the bottle, just to kind of smell that. But definitely there is a huge difference. I still think that is more you know, more punchy in aroma, more barrel influenced, heavier, richer on the aroma than what that is. This is slightly lighter, but it is opening out a little bit. So let's dive in for a little taste. And I can't deny it. That's the whole reason I bought a bottle at first sipping. That is goddamn gorgeous. That is insanely good. So tasty, so... Let's get rid of the adjectives or whatever those words are. It's, it's 
Oh my God, it's so, so good. And in a very different way to what that is as well. In a very different way to what I normally associate this sort of region of column steel rums. I get, I've got a nod of Disserano, like almonds. Uh, definitely got an apple vibe on there. Um, definitely got a sort of citrusy, orangey citrus. Yes, there is barrel influence. If you if you kind of roll it over the top of your tongue, yes, you get those oak spices, that kind of cinnamony prickle, the wood kind of, not wood burn, but that wood tingle over the top of your tongue. But it just opens out that 50% ABV. So that bump in ABV just brings all those other flavors out to play. It's definitely fruity, it's definitely juicy, juicy fruit as well. When you mix saliva with that, it just turns into a lovely, strong fruit juice. Oh my God, this is absolutely delicious. And after another couple of sips, again, it's it's changing all the time. I might leave this out. I might sort of have another taste of this after the filming session. Because now I'm kind of getting those apricot notes. There's definitely, there's definitely apple there. Definitely kind of, definitely that sort of green apple vibes. And it would actually, now it's kind of lengthening out a bit. I would actually go a little bit of, like that leathery, you know, old barrel kind of taste. But the fruit dominates it. It's it's fruit dominated with a healthy ABV that makes you kind of think it's actually wood dominated, but really isn't. It is fruit dominated. You know, I'm so glad I bought a bowl. I was, it was at the end of the night. I'd been there all day uh, and I did, I tried this during the day and I was got, it got to sort of chucking out time. I was like, do I get a bottle? Do I not get a bottle? 75 pounds. Is it worth it? Is it? I'm so glad I did. That is absolutely delicious. And you know what? As much as I love that, oh, I think I think because of my cane juice journey, I'm appreciating the higher ABVs a little bit more. And I think that's why I'm on that at the moment. But that higher ABV really does bring out the extra fruit. If you've got, if you're in the UK, and you've got 75 pounds to spend on a rum, which is a tall order, and you, you love that, then I promise you that is an upgrade and you're gonna love it.